Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading for Sunday the 14th of July 2019. Thanks for joining me. It's really nice to be with you today. I hope you've had a fabulous July so far. I'm using the Wildwood Tarot for today's reading and this is a really quality deck. I don't usually like decks that make a lot of changes so you know in instead of um using cups and and swords they decide to make arrows and bows out of them but this deck does that but because so much thought has been put into it and because it's so beautiful and because the images are just incredible i absolutely adore this deck and i make the extra effort of using my little gray cells to stretch a little bit and to take the changes into account which i wouldn't do otherwise which i wouldn't do if the deck wasn't really high quality enough if i thought it was gratuitous or not warranted so that's my speech on that <laughs> so this deck really i adore i i really really adore this it's a beautiful deck and i would really highly recommend it to anyone who reads the tarot we have the Ace of Bows and Arrows of Swords in this deck. Bows is Wands. So we've got the Ace of Wands here. We've got the Five of Stones, which is the Five of Pentacles, which is Endurance, Tough Times, Hardship. And then we have the Four of Stones, Four of Pentacles, Protection. And you can see both of these are kind of trying to find shelter and protect themselves from the fires that are going on externally. I get the sense that there's a sense of fear. And even though it says spark of life and it can be seen as very positive, it's almost dangerous. Here the fire is nurturing, but here it seems like something is going on in the forest on its own and it's creating this fire and lightning is striking and we have to kind of protect ourselves and hold back a little bit and we feel attacked and we feel like we need to protect ourselves and endure the difficulties that are that are taking place at the moment so let's look at this in order the ace of wands the spark of life really beautiful that they've called it that the ace of wands is a blessing from the universe all of the ace cards are and the ace of bows is about ta-da here i am handing to you on a silver platter your life purpose the fire of your life the spark of life the thing that makes you feel passionate and fired up and like you're doing something that is fulfilling and meaningful and that you feel extremely passionate about it's like a bow and arrow hitting its target and creating an explosion of fire. The Ace of Wands is the universe saying, here you go, this is what you're meant to do with your life at this point. Our purpose can change at different times in our life. At some point in our life, the biggest fire and fulfillment can come from a really passionate relationship that we're in and work can be somewhat lukewarm. At other times in our lives, Work can become the central focus of our passionate, fiery experience. And every day going in, it's just a process of creation and really brainstorming and really feeling like, wow, I'm coming to life here through doing this. For others, it's going to the gym and, and seeing their bodies transform and change and really feeling passionate about the work that they're doing in sculpting this new body that they're creating also people who are transitioning people who are changing gender you know the the passion and the the energy and the 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 effort that is put into going from male to female or female to male and seeing the results as you take the hormones and you have certain surgeries to feminize your face and things like that that can be I mean, obviously, I haven't got personal experience of that, but I just imagine that to be such a 
powerful process where you can see the results and it must be all consuming and it must be exhilarating to go through such an amazing fundamental human shift to go from being one type of person to a completely different type of person. And that's what the Ace of Bows, the spark of life is all about. It's the thing that you're completely obsessed with, the thing that fascinates you, the thing that gives you life. Now, the Five of Stones is usually a couple who is rejected by the powers that be, by an institution, and they are together. They support each other, and the, it's a symbol of hard times and illness and rejection. Here we've got this poor little orphan girl. She's by herself, and she's enduring life out in the wilderness, and she's really self-sufficient and independent. No one's helping her. She's found shelter. She's found a cave to live in. There's a place in Turkey where they live in, um, they've checked for thousands of years. People have lived in these caves and they've updated them as they've gone along over the, over the centuries. And they're beautiful apartments in those caves. So people still live in caves. People still use natural, um, formations of planet earth and the rocks and things to to build architecture and structures and things like that this young girl i mean you would assume that she would last five minutes out in the wilderness by herself but she's found a place to be safe to put down her head to go to sleep to be out from the elements and be shielded and protected from the elements she knows how to make fire I'm sorry, but I was never a Boy Scout, and I don't know how to rub two sticks together to make a fire. I mean, I guess I could if I spent a day doing it, but she already knows that at the age of, what, five? And I'm getting that here also. It's like an arrow twisting and turning and creating this fire. There's a sense of friction, and the friction creating this fire, this spark of life, because something is really turning, turning, turning at high speed. And it's about making the effort that's going to go boom, here's the flame. So there may be something that feels like I'm having a breakthrough today because I've tried so hard at something. I've endured the, the tough times, the the no's that people have given me, like as in, no, you can't do this. I've endured, I've kept pushing, I've kept kind of rubbing the sticks together to make something happen. And through my endurance, now, boom, the fire is there. And it warms this little girl. It allows her to cook food. It allows her to feel kind of nurtured and cozy in a way even. Lightning is out in the atmosphere, so it's not the friendliest place to live. But she's hanging in there and she's doing well. She's like a deer that has no mother. And when you are Bambi out in the woods, you're a target for wolves and people who take advantage and stronger people and stronger animals who are going to think of you as, hey, I'm going to eat this person for breakfast or I'm going to you know, take them down because they're innocent. They don't know what they're doing. They're a vulnerable target. And I'm going to go after those people. So when you're vulnerable, you need protection. And this little deer is um, shielded by these stones. And the four of stones is usually about hanging on to physical things that you don't really need, that you, you're becoming miserly and you're looking at the physical side of things too ex excessively and giving money too much importance. In this case, it's, it's genuine. It's warranted. This animal needs protection, so it needs to be sheltered. She also needs to be sheltered and she needs to work and make an effort to endure the cold, the fire, maybe just to warm her up, really. And that leads to a spark of life and that leads to 
living your own true purpose in your own life. If you are this little girl, you can become whatever you want to become. If you grow up with parents and in a family, yes, that's wonderful. It's much easier, of course. And in reality, I mean, this would be a dreadful... I mean, Child Protective Services would have to step in but if we're if we're looking at this uh, as part of the fantasy here of the symbols that the tower is presenting us with if you don't have anyone molding you and guiding you you can absolutely discover your own purpose and you can become the person that you want to be without restriction if you have two parents who are very very catholic and you want to be a drag queen your parents are going to say, absolutely not. You're not going to go and perform in that club at 15 years old and start um, honing your craft as a drag queen because one, it goes against our religion and two, we just won't have that. We're not going to be embarrassed as a family to have our son do that kind of thing. If there are no parents, if you have protected yourself, if you have endured the big bad world by yourself, then you're free to do whatever it is you please. So this little girl, when she grows up to be 14, 15, 16, and she says, I want to design clothes that are based on my experiences of nature and my deep understanding of nature, then she can do that. And no one's going to say, oh, darling, we don't work. We're, you, how how day class say to actually sell items and products and to make a living off those. We don't need to do that. We're aristocrats, you know? So first of all, reading it this way today, there something is handed to you, an idea of what gives you a sense of purpose and fulfillment and drive is handed to you. It may feel dangerous and it may feel external and it may feel like, Oh, if I follow this path, it's going to be hard and I'm going to need protection. I'm going to, it's going to be scary. So for instance, I realize that I'm gay, but I want to take it a step further and I want to be a drag queen. Okay. I want to be in the public eye and perform as a female impersonator. That then means that if I am a female impersonator, I make myself a target much more for hate crimes rather than just being a gay man who doesn't have public displays of affection in public, no one would ever know. So, But as soon as you make yourself a drag queen, you, you put a target on your back. So you have to endure that and protect yourself more. So a uh, mission uh, purpose may come in that feels like, wow, okay, if I embrace this, I have to really get ready and it's going to feel difficult. That kind of thing is real that's that's something you can trust if you get a message like that that says this is what you're supposed to do and you immediately think about the practical downsides of it that's your ego saying you can't do this because you'll be in danger and you'll be alone and you'll have to protect yourself and all of that stuff when you pursue that it can really be something that thrills you because there are hardships associated with it so there are major lows and major highs if we're reading it the other way around, if you protect yourself and if you endure the difficulties of your life and you learn how to be independent and capable and how to take care of yourself without relying on anyone else, sooner or later, rubbing these two sticks together to create fire, ultimately, you're going to be led to your purpose because you're living by yourself and you're thinking for yourself. You're not limited by any dogma or you're not um, caged in by some sort of institutionalized belief system. You're not restricted by a family code that says we do not behave this way. So either way, whether you come from a place of being alone and making your own way through life, you are likely to have a breakthrough where you realize this is my life purpose, or you may receive something 
So if it's that way, then you're ready for it because you've already been through the hardships and you realize that it's going to, going to continue to be hard, but this is really something that's fulfilling and that you're going to do. If it's this way around, you suddenly get this idea of, um, I want to work as a um, prosecutor for the district, district attorney's office. That's how I want to use my law degree. Again, that will feel powerful and that is a job that can be very fulfilling. But what comes with that job is you have to protect yourself and you have to endure angry people who you send to prison and you then have to worry about when those people are released, are they going to hold a grudge and come after you? So a lot of jobs, a lot of purposes, a lot of paths in life are, are double-edged swords. They may feel very, very inspiring and powerful, but they come with downsides as well. And for some people, that's part of the thrill. For other people, that's a major put off. And that's a major reason to say, no, I'm not going to take the risk. I just don't want to put myself in that position. So I'll just do something that's much safer. So ultimately, let's look at the facts. We've got Mercury in retrograde at the moment. So you're looking at things differently. So you're being presented with new ideas that you've never really considered before. Um, you're on your own, so you're not kind of comparing yourself to other people or what other people are saying. This is something that really comes up from within you, from your connection with your higher self. This is something that's a real part of you, and it's independent of any other people in your life, people who tell you what to do or, yeah, restrict your behavior. So it's something that you ought to pay attention to because you are looking at your life from a different angle. But instead of taking action on this immediately today, I would mull this over and I would give it some thought. If you struggle with discovering what your life purpose is, so if you've gone through this for a while, then that's where I come in. I can draw up your astrology chart by using your place of birth, date of birth, time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, then please order a chart rectification with me. I can work out your time of birth. Once I have those three pieces of information, I can draw up your birth chart. It shows me what your life purpose is, what's going to make you feel fired up and, and like you're doing the right thing. It also gives me what your vocational aptitudes are and whether your working life and your life purpose are one and the same thing or whether they're separate. I can show you what your strengths and weaknesses are, where the ego tries to sabotage you and keep you, you know, down and keep you small so that you don't achieve this big success. What's going on for you in love and where the best place is for you to live. I look at the astro cartography for that. It's so useful in finding where the best place is for you on the planet to exist. What's coming up in future, I use the predictive astrology. So the progress charts and the transits as well as the tarot to look at what's coming up for you. So if you have any questions around this sort of topic or any questions at all for me, then please get in touch via my website, gregoryscott.com, for a personal reading. It would be a pleasure to work with you and to give you these answers. Have a fabulous day here, and I'll speak to you tomorrow.